welcome to the Sales Influence Podcast, where we talk about finding the why in how people buy. I'm your host, Victor Antonio, and today we're going to talk about brain rules. Yes, let's talk about the brain a little bit. Hey, let me just make the following statement that I'm going to ask you a question, and I want your answer. A candy bar and a piece of gum together cost a dollar and ten cents. I'll say it again. A candy bar and a piece of gum together cost a dollar and ten cents. The candy bar costs one dollar more than the piece of gum. Question: How much does the gum cost? Think about it. A candy bar and a piece of gum together cost a dollar ten. The candy bar costs a dollar more than the piece of gum. How much does the gum cost? Now, if you said ten cents, then you are absolutely wrong. Yep, you're wrong. I know, I know. You're probably saying, no way. I'm right, Victor. No, you're wrong. Let's walk through it. A candy bar and a piece of gum together cost a dollar ten. The candy bar costs a dollar more than the piece of gum. How much does the gum cost? You said ten cents. Well, if the gum is ten cents and the bar costs a dollar more, then the bar would be a dollar ten. Which means that would be a dollar twenty. The real answer is that the gum costs five cents, and if the bar costs more than a dollar, that's a dollar and five cents, which would give you a total of a dollar ten. Now, this was、uh, an example given in a book I read, and I thought it was fascinating. I forgot the author of this example, so I apologize for that. But it was a great example of how we have two types of brains. There's the reflexive brain. Then there's the reflective brain. Reflexive. Think of reflex, like somebody hits you on the knee. You, you know the reflex, right? That's you know your reflex to something, your automatic response, your gut reaction to something. Then there's the reflective brain to reflect, to think, to ponder, right? And what they're finding is that your reflexive brain, your reflex brain, as Daniel Kahneman would say, the、uh, Nobel Peace Prize winning economist said. Your reflexive brain is your system one. Reflexive, knee-jerk, gut reaction is typically your system one. More decisions are made with the reflexive part of the brain than the reflective brain, which he calls system two. Now, this is interesting because a lot of our reactions are almost reflexive. When I asked you this question about the candy bar, your immediate reflexive response was to say, "Well, of course, Victor, it's ten cents." But then, when you walk through the math, you go, "Wait a minute! If the gum is ten cents and the bar is a dollar more, that means the bar has to be a dollar and ten cents, but that would be a dollar twenty." But then you go, "Well, wait a minute! So then the gum would have to be five cents, and then if it's a dollar five because it's a dollar more, that's a dollar ten. That's the right answer." See. If you got the ten cent the first time, by the way, I I failed that exam also. I failed this question as well because I immediately said ten cents. Of course, why not? But the real answer is when you really think about it, is that the gum is really five cents. Now, what happened there? My reflexive system one brain, the one that's very reflexive, said, "Of course, it's ten cents." But it wasn't until I started thinking about it. And that my reflective thinking part of the brain, system two, says no, 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 that that's wrong. Here's why, and it logically went through it. Too often, our customers make decisions based on the reflexive side of their thinking. It's more knee-jerk reaction. It's more gut instinct. It's more about whether I like you or not. It's it's a feeling I get. I mean, we've all been in that situation where you meet somebody for the first time. And you go, I, I don't like this person. You don't even know why you don't like the person because the person has barely said anything. And if they said anything, it wasn't even offensive. But there's something. The reflexive side of you says, I don't like this person. Right? That's an example of a shallow example of the reflexive side. Now, the brain is a fascinating mechanism, right? Because why do we go more towards the reflexive? Why are we more automatic in our responses? Well, think about it. The brain, you know, the brain is two percent. Of our body weight, right? The brain is about two percent of our body weight, but yet it consumes about twenty percent of our energy. Now, this is kind of interesting, right? It's two percent of our body weight, but our brain consumes twenty percent of our energy. I mean, that is high fixed cost, right there. In other words, this piece of machinery you have in your head really uses up a lot of energy. You ever have one of those days where? 
you don't do any physical work, but you know that you were doing a lot of things that day and you just get home and you're exhausted and you don't know why. Well, here's why. Your brain was working overtime. Maybe you weren't doing a lot of physical labor, but your brain was on overdrive. It was using up energy. And so that's what typically happens. Now, the brain is an interesting machine because it is known also as a cognitive miser. What do I mean by cognitive miser? It's a cheapskate when it comes to energy. It hates to use up energy. Do you have like an uncle, aunt, maybe your mother, your father, that always likes to conserve energy? You know, always likes to turn off the heater during the winter or like, you know, turn off the air conditioning when, you know, it's like over 100 degrees outside because they want to conserve energy. Well, that's kind of how the brain works. It's always looking to conserve energy. And the way it does it is that several ways. One is that it uses something called heuristics. Think of a heuristic as a rule of thumb. It's a rule of thumb thinking, things that you think about almost immediately. For example, when you grab a product and it's very light, you immediately think, hmm, must be cheap. See, your brain created a heuristic, a rule of thumb that says, if it is light, it is cheap. That's a heuristic. Here's another one. If the price is too low, you, your brain says what? Hmm, must be cheap must not be worth anything. That's a heuristic. Your brain basically says, it wrote a rule, says, okay, anything that's really cheap or really low price is going to be cheap. So don't get it. You know what I mean? And so again, it does these things. It finds ways. If you see a long line at a restaurant, you think what? Hmm, that must be a great restaurant. Long line equals great restaurant. That's a heuristic. That's part of the brain's way of making decisions without having to think. That is how it uses its reflexive side to make quick decisions. Also, the brain only focuses on things that are relevant to it. So in other words, if it has no meaning for you, then you don't want to focus on it. You ever listen to a speaker or, I don't know, just somebody in general giving a lecture and they're talking, talking, and then you, your brain drifts. Your brain drifts because what the person is saying from the front of the room, it just doesn't appeal to you, it makes no sense to you, has no meaning to you. So you start checking your messages on your phone, you start texting. That is your brain's way of saying, let's not allocate any energy to the guy in the front of the room, let's allocate energy to other things like checking my email, right? So that's how the brain works. The brain also looks for contrast. Again, the brain is lazy. It looks for contrast. It doesn't want to use up a lot of energy, so it just says, what's the difference? It's always looking for differences. And again, you ever walk into a room and go, something's changed. I don't know what, but something's changed. See, that's your brain registering a contrast. It's always looking for differences. This is why it's important that if you have a product, the first thing you need to do is differentiate your product. Because if the brain can't tell the difference between A and B, it'll just move on. It, if it can't see the difference, it'll just ignore it. So keep that in mind. So what do we have to do as salespeople to deal with this brain? One, we gotta learn the brain, break the brain rules. Sometimes, for example, one of the customer objections for you may be is that your company's too young. Too young means we shouldn't work with them, it's too risky, that's their brain rule. So what do you have to do? Show them that working with a young company like yours is actually an advantage over working with a larger company. You know, sometimes the brain rule is uh, we're working with somebody, it's hard to switch over to somebody else. So what's our job as salespeople? To break that rule. We need to show them that switching over to a new vendor isn't really that hard. Get the idea, you gotta break the brain rules. Customers have brain rules, and our job is to break, block, overcome those brain rules. Second is again, make it meaningful and relevant to them. Make sure that it really pertains to who they are because the brain loves it when it matters to it. Last but not least, again, find a way to contrast your product or service. The brain looks for contrast. So if you can do three things, break the brain rules, break the conventional thinking, Two, make it meaningful and relevant in your presentation. Three, again, find a way to draw contrast. You will wake up that brain. That brain will pay attention to you if you can do those three things. Anyway, this is Victor Antonio, and that's it for this Sales Influence Podcast. I know, this one was a little brainy, wasn't it? So I hope you enjoyed it. So again, really think about that. Reflective versus reflexive. And most customers are reflexive, system one, knee jerk feeling reaction. So anyway, don't forget to leave me some feedback on iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube. Let me know what you think. 
As always, I greatly appreciate it. Also, check out my sales training website. You know the one, seminarsonselling.com, where you'll find great sales training programs for you or your team to help you grow your business and do what? Make more money. Lastly, I want to thank you for listening. This is Victor Antonio, always reminding you, selling ain't hard when you know how. Take care. Every manager can feel it. The difference between a motivated, value-driven sales team and one that's stuck in a rut. CEOs know the difference too. They can see it clearly in the profit and loss columns. The question is, how do you get your team to this elite level? Is there something extra you can do to break through the remaining resistance and equip them with the right mindset to grow your business? Yes, there is. But you're not going to do it with one of those cheesy inspirational speakers or some self-proclaimed guru. What you need is someone with a real business track record to deliver key insights in a captivating way to give your team the right tools for selling in today's tough marketplace. Enter Victor Antonio, experienced executive, innovative thinker, compelling speaker. He's ready to deliver the message you need your people to hear, not with a canned speech, but a customized dynamic keynote designed to deliver results. Bring Victor Antonio to your next event before the competition does.